Thanks again, traders, for hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. Turn on your notifications. Today we're going to be talking about classical chart patterns and applying the bigger picture each day to the levels and the bigger geometrical structures. Thanks again. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke continuing our discussion on the high and the low, looking at classical chart patterns today and my approach just reading through some of the comments and just stepping back and I think it's important to emphasize uh, what I'm looking for to people and the understanding that uh, you know the bigger picture is allowing the chart to set up properly a lot of people telling me they you know uh, have lots of experience reading charts but they can't understand what I'm talking about and my response to that is if if your chart reading is great then you don't need to be watching these videos and uh, one of the greatest concepts that I learned from Peter Brandt was Peter trades on weekly charts, classical chart patterns. And the reason he trades from these weekly charts is that that large compression pattern, when it forms a breakout and a pattern is completed, they tend to have a geometrical expansion for a measured move that allows the trader to obviously capture asymmetrical risk reward. Now, I try to use that same approach day to day on gold or whatever instrument I'm trading based on numbers timing but on the larger geometrical pattern of the high and the low of the day now just looking at some basic concepts and people I think are getting caught in the minutia and not understanding that I'm looking for a large compression pattern we had a large move down on the Thursday we had a lower high that was created just even in this this consolidation towards the end of the session. The new day starts and we trade inside of this high. But as you'll notice, we have a high and a low. We have a high and a low that forms a rectangle. This is one example of the market breaking out, pulling back, and continuing. Now, as we head into the rest of the day, this market forms a new high, so obviously we're going higher. The market is making new highs. We haven't gone to the low. The market has a current low of the day in place, but the market has broken out of this lower geometrical consolidation <clears throat> before pushing higher in Asia, which means we're obviously making new highs. The high of the day is not in place yet, making a new high pulling back in the Europe London window going up again and making a new high and then retesting it forming our M pattern and also a pattern within a pattern at the high of the day currently prior to heading into the US window we have higher lows and the US session then pulls back into traders that are short before dropping down to the low of the day now this is one type of pattern. This is one type of pattern that you will see over and over again. Now coming back to some basic understandings. Markets do three things. They break out, they pull back, and they trend. They break out, they pull back, and they reverse. Or they stay consolidated within a trading range. Now this is an example of being inside of a high and a low. The market proceeding to break out and make new highs and expanding the range before locking in a high, dropping down, pulling back, and moving back towards the low of the current day. So not even looking at timings, number levels, uh, anything else other than the high and the low. Now, if the market, if you understand, we talked about the pump and dump yesterday, the market pushed up in Asia, continued to push higher, continue to push higher before finally pushing through to a new high, pulling back, and then rolling over. So Asia and London have put in the low of the day and the high of the day heading into the U.S. session. The next day, we still have a low of the week. We have a Monday. We have a high heading into the new day of the U.S. session. This is a lower high. Okay, We have a low of the current day from Friday but we have the low of the week now you'll notice this was an inside bar now 
we head into the next day. The market is inside. Now, if traders traded off the high of the day into the Asian session, that move broke out from the low of the week. So again, we have a sideways consolidation, a rectangle with higher lows within a larger rectangle. You have higher highs, which again is a dead giveaway. They're jamming them into the high, but just, just purely in a, in a rectangular consolidation sense. They take out the low of Friday, triggering inside bar traders short, also the low of the week, before pulling back and giving us a lower high at the end of the Asian window. Now, this forms our W structure. So this, this may be all prior to you coming to the screen if you're trading just London or if you're trading New York. Friday was an example of where London put in the high of the day. Now this is a pattern we will see again and again. And we're going to look at a specific example yesterday in one moment on the S&P. So this is a type of pattern you can screenshot. So again, no daily levels have been broken. But inside we've broken a lower high. They've gone up back inside of the previous day's range. This, this is the U.S. session all the way down. Consolidation, they've gone back up inside of the range to put in a high of the day before pulling back and traders shorting that down towards the low of the week. We have a low of the week in place. We have other time frame traders trapped. This is all prior to coming to the London session and New York. We have now a, rectangular, a rectangle down low, a geometric structure down low. This breakout has failed. So again, the majority of breakouts fail. If you've studied the turtle traders, one of the most frustrating things some of the turtles had was that they had to accept many small losses. They would trade 20, 20 period breakouts, 21 day breakouts, whatever they were, and they would have a tight stop. But the thesis was when those markets exploded for breakouts that weren't going to come back, they made the bulk of their money on certain markets that went into long-term sustained trends and they would pile in positions every time the market moved a certain distance. So again, we have a peak formation, low a W structure. We're in a rectangle. Now, I talk about measured moves. If you're not sure about any of this information about measured moves, geometrical structures, any of that type of stuff, I've talked about getting Schaubacher's book, Technical Analysis and Stock Market Profits. I've talked about getting Peter Brandt's book or reading, reading Peter Brandt's material or listening to him speak or looking at his chart patterns on his Twitter uh, profile. Also has trading commodity futures with classical chart patterns. Everything is clearly and well defined. This material has been around since the 20s and 30s, McGee, Edwards and McGee. And I know Peter doesn't subscribe to short-term trading, but my approach is similar in the sense that I'm looking for these geometric structures to give us bigger ranges, bigger ranges of range expansion in terms of where these charts can go to if we are positioned in a move and then also a thesis when we do have a market that fails in a breakout especially in the timing window and we'll look at this in a second so again each and every day where is my high and where is my low now it's not really debatable I know people love to say oh that's hindsight anybody can mark up a chart well feel free to mark up your charts and put them on YouTube I don't care I'm just trying to help people step back and not get caught up into the manipulation and the minutia and look at the bigger picture. So when people make those sort of comments, I just realize that you haven't listened or paid attention to what I'm trying to explain to you. And then that is the art, but then you need to perfect the art in live time. And that takes practice. It takes patience. It takes perseverance because uh, you need to fight a lot of demons about trying to trade every move, about trying to you know, be right, trying to get even, uh, trying to extract revenge on the market, all of those things. But if you step back and look at the bigger picture, you will often notice that these patterns, again, we're in consolidation. The market makes a high inside in Asia. And this pattern you will see again and again. We form a high and a low, and then the market proceeds to go down in one push, two pushes, 
three pushes and give us a W formation at the bottom. Okay, and I love it when people say this is all hindsight. Well, no, there's a high and a low going into the session. And then in London, the London Open gives us a bull pin, and this happens to be at double zeros. And we have a creeping trend, which I've talked about. Those are our lower highs. We lock it in with a second bull pin hammer, and the market proceeds to auction up to the high of the day. We get a consolidation at the high of the day, which if you're not familiar with this, get familiar with it because this is a peak formation low. If you counter trend the peak formation low, you're caught in a measured move. And this measured move gives us an engulfment pin hammer heading into the U.S. session at the high of the day. This is going to give us a range expansion, which I just showed off the bottom. We're looking at a minimum of one full expansion of that move up. Now we're heading into the Fed tonight, Fed announcement. We're day one, day two, day three. This market may go vertical through the high or go up to the high before the U.S. session, pull back, retest that high, and the Fed may come all the way back down towards our initial breakout down in the Asian range. The Fed can, anything can happen. But just coming back to the big picture. So we have a breakout in place. We don't really have, we have a, to some degree, a low of the day in place. We have a low of the New York session on our bullpen right here. That's where the New York equity market opened. And we have a high of the day. So if you're trading inside, yes, obviously there can be some trades. And on gold, some of these, this is a 50 pip, uh, 30, 35, 40 pip move down. Uh, this is a 40 pip move down. But you're inside right now. And so, yes, we have lower highs. Okay, these are smaller inside of the high and low. So I'm going to allow this market to set up a high, set up a low, and then obviously look to be buying low or selling high when that market sets up appropriately to give me the best trading opportunities. Just trying to trade every single move inside, there can be opportunities, but the bigger trade comes when you allow that market to set up and trade back to the high and the low. I talked about price being in a box constantly. People laughed at me. Uh, that's not my concept. That's that's old. That's Edwards and McGee. That's Schaubacher. Peter Brandt will talk, tell about that. Uh, the best trades come out of rectangular geometrical structures. We talked about second day trades. We have a rectangle. We have a lower high. The market proceeds to make another lower high. Asia puts in a new high of the day. They push up into that high of the day and they roll over. We have a pattern within a pattern. So coming back to just looking and, and studying, these patterns will set up and show up again and again and again. Three levels of drop. One, two, three. Uh, I talked about the, the pump and dump yesterday. We had a pump and dump into the close that started in the U.S. close. Pump, 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 rolls over. Takes out the low of the, the week and the day. Uh, we have a, a dump a dump, a dump for the big move up. And we're looking at the S&P and that, that example of being inside of the range. We see the high of the U.S. session from the night before. We have a lower high from that U.S. session. We have a, a low of the day from the U.S. session. We have lower highs that were taken out in the vertical move and then our new day starts. We have a lower high that's created when Asia rolls over and they, they begin the vertical move. Now, I talked about this yesterday. This little two bar pattern, this engulfment reversal bullpen hammer is the beginning of our pump. This is Asia. I'm not trading Asia on the American markets. And for the most part, I'm looking for the bigger trade in gold over the course of the day unless I go to the high of the day or the low of the day in Asia or London meaning they take out a weekly, a daily level, whatever that may be, as we just saw in gold. But we have our bullpen hammer, the first push. There's our first push. We have a, a new high inside. So we're inside. We're inside of the high and the low. But the market is making new highs back inside of the U.S. range. This is the U.S. session. So we have a creeping trend into the open of the U.S. It forms a low. They go vertical and then do the measured move down. So we're back inside of the U.S. range. They push up, pull back. They push up, take out the lower high of the U.S. session. There's our second push. And then we get our third push 
into the Europe London 12 candle window. We get an engulfment. We get a engulfment of the whole upper structure prior to heading into the U.S. session. We have our lower highs, sorry, our, our higher lows, a game which I talk about our fuel for a possible move down when this market, if it, if indeed it does roll over. So we have a lower high and a, and a uh, higher low as the market rolls over prior to the equity market opening. This bear pin hammer is the U.S. session equity market opening. Now, on our one minute time frame, this market went back up above the double zeros to the quarter level in a stop hunt to roll over for a 50 pip move back down to the low of the day. So, again, it's just understanding that this is the same pattern that we saw on gold. Last Friday, same pattern, creeping trend back up, putting in a high, working the high, rolling over, stop hunting back up before uh, trading back down to the low of the day. So this is a, a, a playbook trade setup. Uh, and again, if you're only trading the U.S. session, uh, you're going to see this over and over again, whether it's for the long trade or the short trade. So if we step back and just look at like heading into a new week, Okay, again, the same principles apply, and I do this on, on every chart that I'm going to be looking at. I'll draw the high and the low, heading into a new week, and look at the different pairs. We can see on the Canadian dollar, we had three, three pushes into a high inside of a trading range from the previous week. This week, as we head into the new week on the Monday, we're in a breakout mode. We had news last week on the Canadian dollar. So again... Uh, is this a pump and dump scenario? I don't know yet. But we have a move that's gone vertical. We have a peak formation high. The market's come back down inside. And again, just coming back to drawing our levels, I would draw the higher low into the close, and we have a lower high. And we can see that as the day traded yesterday, the market rolled over in Asia. And again, if you've traded the Canadian dollar, I talk about this. We we'll see the best moves typically in the U.S. session on the Canadian dollar. They go down into the previous day's low. They work into the low and reverse just heading into the U.S. session 12 candle window. Now, we're, we're at 50 down at this level. I'm not even going to bring up this chart on the, the numbers running. I just want the concept of these chart classical chart patterns are everywhere. So allowing this market to set up, now what we've done is we've also allowed the range to expand in terms of our asymmetrical risk reward. Traders are trading this short with their indicators, no problem, okay? And if they're but they're, if they're not taking out this this profit, obviously as the market goes into consolidation, now what we want to be asking ourselves is is that are they are they taking anything off the table? Are they going are they going to be the ones trapped for the vertical move back up to the high of the day? And again, that's a fast explosive move. Creeping trend, this builds up order flow, consolidation, breakout pullback, U.S. session opens, second uh, hour for an explosive move back up to the high of the day. So this is on the major uh, Canadian dollar. So again, just looking at the high and the low, we have a rectangle going into consolidation. We have a high and a low. Okay, we have a high, we have a lower high. This is inside of the high. So we head into our new day. The market's a creeping trend. It's a breakout pullback continuation we have one push two pushes three pushes into the low and a one two three people uh, ask me oh I don't what do you mean by one two three everything else there's our low bear okay we lock in the consolidation but it's the timing the level and the understanding that the market has broken out we have a creeping trend down we're down at the low of the day breakout pullback explosive move this coil this is a coil for an explosive move back up we're looking at the Aussie dollar. We have our low of Monday. We have our high of Monday. I talk about Monday, Tuesday forms the initial balance for the week, the high and the low typically for the week. One of those extremes will tend to hold. On Tuesday, the market works up, breaks out of Monday's high, continues to work up into the high. So this is a great example. Same scenario, pump and dump, pump and dump, push, push push into the high at the timing window before locking in the high with an engulfment and then going vertical through all these higher lows this is order flow 
Okay, push, 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 push. Boom, explosive move down to the low. Creeping trend into the low, into the Asia open for the vertical move back up through into the move that came from the uh, into the U.S. session last night. This peak formation high is just prior to the 12 candle window. Uh, and again, I'm just looking, I'm just showing that the importance of stepping back and looking at the high and the low day one, day two, day three, uh, we're in a trading range. Okay. So far we're in a trading range. We're down low. The market broke down. We had volume trapped down low. This may be a massive accumulation pattern for a reversal long time will tell. So looking at the Euro, we see a big move down on Friday. Now this is interesting because, uh, we'll look at this on the pound as well. We have the fed coming up, uh, Tomorrow morning, uh, Perth time, uh, Wednesday evening or Wednesday morning, I guess, uh, uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, New York time. But we have Monday coming down and forming a low. So again, just if we have our, our geometry, okay, the market's in process making a new low, it forms a low. So now we have a low. And then we also have, obviously, a high of the day, but we have a lower high. From the close of the session, the market's uh, broken above that. And again, if we were trading this on the Monday, we had a lower high. And there's our W formation. So we have a W formation. The market has gone into consolidation and proceeded to expand the range and make new highs. So obviously, again, coming back to the concept of uh, most breakouts fail. Okay, the market has has broken the high. Uh, in the U.S. session, but again, prior to the U.S. session, it goes to new highs and then comes vertical down to get the, the longs from the London session. But we have a high and a low now heading into Wednesday's session. We're down low, so it's possible we may be trapping volume down low for an explosive move back up on the Fed, back to where this, this move began. Again, we could be looking at a massive dump and pump. The other scenario is if we scrunch our chart up, we can see that the market has been making new lows and just coming back to that simple concept of geometry, just looking at larger rectangles. The market makes uh, swing low, swing highs and pulls into consolidation. Okay, Breaks out, pulls back, making new lows. So again, we're dropping down, consolidating, dropping down, pulling back, consolidating. And the market is now poised possibly and going sideways heading into the Fed. We've got a Monday, Tuesday high low. We're on top of our W formation from Monday, low of the week. Again, this market could just be working its way down again, or we may retest that high consolidation for a move back up to where that move began on Friday. So applying this in live time. Now, coming back to gold, again, I talk about um, I like gold. I like gold, but I also respect gold and I understand that I'm better off looking for these bigger moves when the high and the low of the larger time frames have been locked in. We can see there's there's lots of opportunities inside, but there are great opportunities on the outsides of these geometrical structures. So when we look at gold yesterday, we can see that Asia, again, there was a 25 40 pip move down, they made a high. We had volume trapped up high, low hanging fruit. They took out the stops. They came back and got stops on the first mouse before dropping down. So we have one push. We have our second push into the gap time. Creeping trend back up. One, two, three. One push, two push, three pushes. And then a move down to the low. The low of the uh, US session. So again, we had buyers long off of the double zeros into the close of the session. This person was long on the engulfment bullpen hammer. They've held on to this. They've come back and hit the stops. London open, locked in a bullpen hammer, middle structure, a second bullpen, and a third one that takes out the middle structure for a W. Okay, but on the one-minute chart, this is what traders would see. Now, this is what I love when people say, well, anybody can mark up a chart. That's true, but if you're patient enough to wait, there's an opportunity to get in down low for a partial position, knowing that the market's going to come back into your trade. But we have a low of the day locked in. As the market creeps back down into this trade and breaks 
we have a broken a breaking structure in that first move London Open. They break the second structure, and there's our engulfment bullpen hammer for our trade entry at the low of the day at double zeros. But we also now have a rectangle that we're trading at the bottom of for a possible measured move of at least one full range expansion, which takes us up 100 plus pips. So this is an ideal setup. When you get a rectangular geometrical shape, creeping trend down into the low at the timing window, opportunities exist on the smaller time frames to not only minimize your risk, but increase your, your opportunity for risk reward. But being patient to maybe scale into that trade and also hold on to it, break even when it clears that lower structure, possibly understanding that this consolidation at the high of the day is a pattern within a pattern for a measured move for a second full range expansion heading into the U.S. session. So these bigger geometrical structures, again, if you're not familiar with them, go read Peter Brandt's book. Either one of them, Diary of a Professional Commodity Trader, Trading Commodity Futures, read Schaubacher's book. Um, you're trading against the best, brightest, well-equipped, best educated, highly competitive, sophisticated, access to information, the whole deal. You're trading against the smart money. And you watch a few videos, you read a few books, you take a few courses, and you think that the longer you're trading, the better you'll get. And trading doesn't work like that. Trading is a performance skill. It takes self-awareness. It takes proficiency. It takes excellence of being a master of your craft. And every single day, you can make mistakes. Uh, you can have two people who have the same information, same chart, and look at it totally differently. Regardless of what they think they know, understand the high-low and understand how the whole day can be building up order flow for a bigger move later, whether that's on a normal pattern, whether it's a high-low pattern, a high of the week, low of the week, maybe it's a compression pattern for an explosive move in the next session. Uh, there's no free lunch and nobody's going to give you an easy ride. Uh, this is about money. So if you think there's a cookie cutter situation and, and you're looking for that, you're probably best suited to go get an EA if you can handle the ups and downs and drawdowns and the swings that those systems will have unless you're running multiple systems. But if you're looking at trying to master the discretionary, discretionary trading, uh, my suggestion would be to try and really establish some firm playbook trade setups, knowing exactly what you're looking for, knowing when things don't seem to look right, uh, having the awareness to possibly not trade at all, being patient, uh, being disciplined and just keeping things as simple as possible. So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Again, uh, thank you for a lot of great feedback. Uh, just keep getting better. We're on day three. We have the Fed tonight. Uh, I think we're going to see a massive move one way or the other. But again, just stepping back and waiting for some high-low opportunities. We now have a high and we have a low. We have a low of the day in place. We have a high from last night. We have a lower high inside of the range, but we'll wait and see what happens between now and later. Till then, have a great trading session, and may the markets go Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.